manuscript we are going to speak of today takes a look at the reticulocyte hemoglobin content as a predictor for individuals who either need iron or do not. The amazing thing about the reticulocyte hemoglobin is it comes off with the CBC at the same speed, you get a hemoglobin white count and platelet count. So instead of having to wait 24 to 72 hours for a percent saturation of transferrin calculated by dividing the serum iron by the total iron binding capacity, or the serum ferritin, which is an acute phase reactant and is often speciously elevated because of that acute phase reactivity, the reticulocyte hemoglobin content can literally tell you in 40 seconds if a patient needs iron. My name is Michael Auerbach. I'm a hematologist and oncologist in private practice in Baltimore, Maryland, and clinical professor of medicine at Georgetown University School of Medicine in Washington, DC. I'm going to speak to you today about our manuscript, which will be published in the June Mayo Clinic Proceedings, using reticulocyte hemoglobin equivalent as a marker for iron deficiency and responsiveness to iron therapy. Our practice specializes in the use of intravenous iron. It is extremely convenient if we have iron parameters when they arrive, but very frequently physicians will send specialists a patient for just anemia and the appropriate serologic testing is not available. Subsequently, the patient needs to come back if indeed therapy is indicated. That requires another communication, days without therapy, and the inconvenience of a second visit, notwithstanding the increased cost. It's literally a game changer to have a tool that allows a physician to make a decision, especially since our decision is usually the use of intravenous iron or the lack thereof immediately. Imagine how convenient that is, rather than having to wait for the labs to come back. We administer 60 intravenous iron infusions per week in my practice, and the streamlining of our care, if we had a test that is as reliable as the reticulocyte hemoglobin, would be remarkable. It not only predicts which patients need iron, but it also tell you, tells you with high sensitivity and specificity which patients do not. Further, after somebody receives IV iron, or for that matter, oral iron, uh, and the appropriate follow-up takes place, on the arrival day, the patient can be told immediately if the intravenous iron or oral iron therapy was adequate. What we now hope as a result of this publication in a journal as prestigious as Mayo Clinic Proceedings is that CLIA and regulatory agencies around the country will move to make the CHR, reticulocyte hemoglobin content, ubiquitously available. It is worth noting that, it, that iron deficiency is the commonest malady on earth with almost 3 billion people with it. And to put that into perspective, it is a hundred times more common than all cancer combined. It would be a big step forward to have a new tool that takes out a significant step that involves waiting. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. 
There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.